Welcome to this first MAT Plus tutorial. Today we're going to take a broad look at the first steps, so that in just a few minutes you can go from baking your model to working with layers, and finally exporting your material. For this example, we'll be working with an updated version of Suzanne, designed to perfectly test and showcase our materials. It's important that the UVs are properly unwrapped, And in this case, we'll also have a high poly version to bake maps from the high poly to the low poly. We select our low poly object and click on New Project. We enter a name, choose the resolution, and specify whether or not our model has UDIMs. As we can see, Mat Plus adds a default layer that we can start working with right away, but what we want in this first step is to bake the high poly version onto the low poly so we can capture all those interesting details in our future texture. We can see four buttons on the side. The first is for working with our layers, and the second is for the bake system. We click on it to access. In the first section, we have the resolution and the number of samples we want to use for the bake. The samples are automatically optimized so that each map has the best possible values. Next, we see the Match by Name button, which we won't use in this tutorial. We'll look at it in the future. Now we're in the section where, if we have a high poly model, we select the collection where it's located. Then we have the cage adjustment option. For now, we won't use it, so that later we can see the difference when we use the adaptive option in our cage tool. Finally, we have the list of maps we want to bake. We can either bake our own maps or use bakes generated in other software. In this case, we'll generate our own bakes. We have the Preview Kochi Edit button to adjust certain values before baking our maps. For example, in the edge map, we can increase or decrease its radius. Once everything is set, we click on Bake and wait a few seconds. Once the bake is finished, we return to the Layers section, where we can enable the preview of channels and baked maps. This allows us to check the bake result. We can see that in both the ambient occlusion and the normal map, we have some issues with the bake result. This is a common problem in Blender. The bake system generates rays to detect the geometry and transfer the details from the high poly object to the low poly object. And if it does so between faces that are too close and facing each other, these errors occur. Fortunately, Mat Plus includes a tool that solves this problem, the adaptive mode in the cage options. Let's go back to the bake module and deselect all maps except AO and normal. We open the cage tool, activate the adaptive option, and bake again to see the new result. As we can see, the result is now much more accurate and clean. We're ready to start working with our layers. In this example, we're going to create a layer of paint, and underneath it, a metallic finish that will show through with a paint wear effect. We select a color in our first layer and set a roughness value. We can turn off the other channels.
Now we add a new layer and slightly change the color and roughness value. Next, we'll use a mask and a texture within that mask to blend our new layer over the previous one. Let's click on the Mask button. This button lets us create masks in different ways, and in this case, we'll use a black mask. In future videos, we'll explore the different types of masks. Next, we click on the Layer Effects button. From this button, we can add different ways to interact with our mask. Generators, which allow us to add procedural generators. Intelligent Mask, which allows us to add smart masks such as Ambient Occlusion, Edge, Edgeware, Dust, or Dirt. Fill Effect, which allows us to add a texture. Paint Effect, which allows us to add a brush to paint directly on the mask. In this case, we'll add a fill effect. And here we can either use a personal texture or one of the hundreds of textures included in Matte Plus. Once we've chosen a texture, we change some values in color and roughness to add variation to our base. We repeat the process with another layer, and this time we also add a bit of height. A quick tip, if we hold Alt and click on a channel, only that channel will be active and the others will be hidden. We can also rename the layers to keep them more organized. Finally, we create the metallic layer. The height channel is set to add by default, meaning all effects from that channel in lower layers will appear in the upper layers. To prevent our height map from being influenced by previous layers, we change the blending mode from Add to Mix. To reveal the metal beneath the paint, we add a mask to the metallic layer, apply an Edgeware Smart Mask, and tweak its values until we achieve the desired wear effect.
With the material ready, we move on to the export section where we convert our project into a set of PBR textures ready for Blender or game engines like Unity, Unreal, or Godot. In global settings, we choose the export folder, file format, bit depth, resolution, and normal map type, whether OpenGL or DirectX. In local settings, we can customize the export in more detail. Choose the format and bit depth for each channel and if needed, create a custom map that packs up to three textures into a single image using the RGB channels. This is a very common and useful workflow in game engines. Once everything is configured, we can simply export the textures or export them while also generating a new material in Blender, with those textures already imported.